Good day, bye frosters. So I'm going to try things, doing things a little bit differently today. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to run you through how the nodes work step by step, like we normally would at the end of a video. You might just want to have the overview first instead of having to sit through however long it takes me to rebuild and explain the logic in these. Just to give you a quick example, this is what the inside of the time warp node looks like. It looks pretty good from here. You've got a one F statement that's talking about, do I want to loop? my time but then you've got this weird thing called selector and what this selector does is it enables custom enums like this which I'm going to show you how to make but in case you wanted to just run through this first and work out how to warp time because you've got something pressing and you don't have the half an hour it's going to take me to do it then I thought maybe I could do this first let me know what you think same kind of thing going on in the bounds node the bounds node looks a lot more complicated it actually it's a little bit more simple but again we've got a custom enum and we have a little bit of object based logic in here which enables this node to take an object a volume or just a set of points and still return what it needs to return what I will do is I will run through how these work first and then we'll get into rebuilding them or partially rebuilding them or whatever we get to let's get started we'll start we will start with the time warp this is how the time warp works now just a bit of backstory before we start that i'm reading in an alembic file and if i disconnect the time warp what happens in the alembic file is it just sits at the first frame because the alembic files need to be told what frame they're on you can see the the input here and the frame rate here so what i what i've built is a node that will allow me to output time in whatever format I like that are that's available on the time node with a multiplier which will speed it up and slow it down now something to th something to be aware of when you're working with Alembic files is that if you leave this to nearest and then set your time very very low so you want very slow it's not going to interpolate the frames you're going to get basically stepping to fix that you can change this to whatever interpolation you prefer and then you get a nice slow movement with the frames all interpolated. Okay, so that's being said, let's see how the time warp works. The time warp is all based around the time node, pretty much, which lives in this selector. This selector compound looks a lot worse than it is because of all of this, but this is just how you set up an enum for working. I have a custom enum here, which is plugged into the value here. I'll just jump out which is then plugged into the type so the value here is showing up on the the value is showing up on the input which is what this is seconds ticks frame and frame length to find out where all those come from you've just got to come in here and find the time node seconds ticks frame and frame length so I've made a custom enumerator that asks you to select one and then this is the selection here and then it compares it to all of the options seconds ticks frame and frame length if it find these are all equal nodes which we've done and these are the if nodes that power it so here you have the time node it's putting out all of these there's the seconds going to there the text going through a float conversion to there frame into there and frame length into there and essentially this is what this is saying is if you are frame length this condition is true and then feeds up through the chain and out and it'll output the frame length as calculated by the time node here and it's the same for everything the frame if you select frame then this one becomes true this becomes this if becomes true and the true case follows through true case on this one would be frame so if you're outputting each frame same with ticks same with seconds so what you get at the out at the output of this node is the kind of time you want then we have the warping part of it which is the multiply and this takes in the multiplier from the input which at this point is at 0.1 we can change that to 1 just leave this plain right happily so bigger numbers speed it up and smaller numbers slow it down pretty simple really it's just a simple simple warp once that's done what we do is we run it through a modulo and what the modulo is letting us do is loop it so 
I happen to know that my Alembic has 33 frames of animation, so one cycle is there. So I have a switch, it's going up to this if, and if I've chosen not to loop, I just get the output straight from the warp here, the multiply. Let's just change that to warp multiplier. So nothing else is being done to it but, but the multiplication if you've got loop off. If you've got it on, it runs it through a modulo. What a modulo does is it divides the number by this number and gives you what's left over. So in this case, I've got 33 in my loop every. So this takes every frame, divides it by 33 and gives you what's left over. And what this, what this does is that if you're on frame 34, it divides that by 33 and gives you what's left over, which is one. 35 gives you two, etc, 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 etc. And that way, whenever it hits a multiple of 33, it goes back to zero and starts again. It's just a quick way of getting a loop. Then we have the condition, that's the looping condition there, that's like, do I want to loop, do I not want to loop? If I turn loop off here, I'll get movement, and then nothing else, because it's no longer running through this modular. It's just running through here. Turn that back on quick. And the rest is just conversion. I, I wanted a scalar field for when I'm doing field work and the time in fields want, want a scalar field version of time. And I wanted long for when I was using it for things like changing the value in an array. All right, so that's really, really quickly. That's the run through of the time warp node. You can you can now stop if you wish, or jump ahead, or go off and play with your and play with your own time, or download it. I'll put a link in the description. And now we'll go on to making our own. So let's unhook that for now, and I'm just going to make us a compound in here, and we'll call this time warp construct jump in here. So the very first thing I'm going to need is a time node. We'll do it from here for now. I'm just going to put out the, before we do the, the enum, and I'll show you how to do that, I'm just going to put this out to make sure it's working. And pop that into frame. So it's just frame coming out, frame going in. We've got none of our functionality, so no looping. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and make that loop. So we'll just need an if statement. And we'll plug the condition in. We're going to handle the, the low hanging fruit first. So, loop yes or no. This is before we do any warping and before we do any choice. We'll just work with frames for now just to get the system working and then we can work from there. So, if I don't want to loop, that's easy, that's done. I'm just going to plug whatever's coming out of the time node into the false. But if I do want to loop, I'm going to need the modulo is a node of its, of its own. It goes in there. Whatever comes out of time goes into value. And then divisor goes into our input. Rename that loop every. And that just lets us loop every so many frames. This gets popped into the true case and the output goes to the frame. So straight away we've got quite a bit of functionality already working. Let's turn on loop. I know that my animation is 33 frames. See if this is working now. Excellent. That's all working fine. So we're about halfway to this already. Nice and quick. Now we'll put in the warping functionality. So what I'm going to do is just put in a pass just to keep things a little bit tidier. And we'll plug that into there. And we'll plug this into there. And now we've freed up this to do things too if we want to. So we'll need to do the warping functionality before we do anything else, which is a good place to pop it in here. Multiply. So we're just simply going to multiply this, this number from the time node by something. Let's bring our inputs down and pop this up here and we'll rename this to multiplier. And let's just set it to one, because of course you can stop the animation by setting it to zero. It's one, so it's what's coming in is what's going out. That should stop it. Yep. 
and that should slow it down by half. Lovely. That's all working really well. So that's that one done. We'll, we'll just double check because it's good to check. We'll turn off loop and see if the, our, uh, our multiplier still works. Yep, that looks looking pretty good to me. He's playing for twice as long at half the speed. Wonderful. So that's pretty good. We've got everything running now apart from the choice and that's what I'm going to show you now. Let's go to your compounds directory and I'll show you how to build a custom enumerator. We'll use the one I made, which is time enum. Now you'll be able to download this. You don't have to do anything yourself if you don't want to, but this really quickly shows you what to do. You need to make a JSON file inside your Autodesk Bifrost compounds directory. And inside this file, which you feel free to grab mine and work with them if you, if you don't want to type all this out, but this is the internal structure of an enum, of a JSON as well. Header, metadata, namespaces, types. This is where we put our things. So you see here I've got enum name. And this is the group inside Bifrost it goes into. And this is the name of the node. So once you've got that, that's that's when you, you go into Bifrost and you get a value. And you come in here and you get other and you set it to an enum. There it is there. So you see this name here matches up with this name here. And then it's just a matter of putting in your members. So seconds, ticks, frame, frame length. They all have to have an integer, which is where on the list they are. And something that tripped me up for ages until Maxime fix it, helped me fix it is that I had a comma there. If you have a comma there, the enum will no longer work. So once you've built this or modified mine and put in whatever you wanted to call things, and we can, we can change that if we want to. All you need to do is save it and then restart Maya. You'll need to restart Maya for Bifrost to pick it up. We've already got one, so we're just going to use it. It's all the way down the bottom here. Yeah, okay. So you can see here it is, it's turned up. It's called itself seconds. There's the value. You can change one of that quite happily. What we have to do is make as many copies of these other as there are things on the list and then compare each one. So what I like to do with that, and you saw it in my other file, is I like to put it in its own compound because otherwise you just end up with a sea of nodes pretty much. So I'm just going to make a compound and I like to call these selectors so that I know what I'm doing with them. We're going to jump in there. What we're going to do first, we'll copy, grab those two and copy them, jump in there and paste them down so we don't have to build them again. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push this into the input. So this is where we, where our command is coming in from outside. So as you can see here, you've now got this value. So we'll just change this to type because that's what I used before pop this up here. I'm going to pop this into the input and now when you're back out in your main graph you've got time warp construct. Click on that. You've now, this won't do anything at the moment but you can change them. They're in the order that we entered them inside the JSON file and they're all available for selection. That's perfect. That's what we want. Let's go to the selector again. So what I'm going to need to do is duplicate this like so. And I'm going to need to compare this one and this one. So we'll do an equal like this. So this is now telling me if what's coming in is equal to, in this case, seconds. So it's we've done we've done comparisons, and it really is just a comparison. Is the output of this the same as this? What this is outputting right now is seconds. As you can see, I've set it. And what this is outputting right now is whatever we set it out the top, which at the moment, I'm not sure, it's probably seconds. So here we start with the logic. I need to put in an if statement. So if this is equal to this, what do we do? Well, we output the seconds. That's the true case. This guy goes out to the input. So the, uh, sorry, and this guy goes out to the output. 
and we just call this timeout. Okay, that's our first one done. That's our that's our seconds. So what you need is this, this, and this. We'll copy and paste them. And we've, straight away, I like to change that to this is checking to see if this incoming is set to ticks. If it is, we want the ticks coming out here. Now there's a little bit of difference here because I don't want to change my format. So what I want to do with the ticks is I want to just convert it to a float. So everything coming out of here is a float, we can convert it back later. So if ticks is selected, and it's obviously that's equal to what's coming out of there, which is ticks, then we want this to output the, the ticks. But what do we do with it now? This is already filled. So this is where we start chaining things up. And because this is an enum, it literally cannot be two things at once. It can't be seconds and ticks. So both of these will never be true at the same time. So what this is saying is, is it seconds? No. What's Nick? What's coming into my false case? What is it ticks? Yes. And that'll go out through and out to there. And you get the hang of this after a little while. But basically, because these can't be true at the same time, you can't have seconds and ticks, then it works. Paste down another copy. Let's get everything lined up and laid out a little bit. So what's next on our list is frame. This is our frame output. Is this equal to frame? Now you've got to watch out for that. If you get that caught up, you can sometimes break your logic and you end up going back through. It's fine we've got four of them. When you've got 24 of them, it gets a little bit more of a pain. So we'll break that one as well. And for this guy, into the false case and the true case goes into frame. And again, you can see we're nice and green. We're all floats all the way up. One more to do. Make sure nothing is selected and paste it down again. But it's going to connect me anyway because it's fun like that. Or it's because of how I set it up. It's probably my fault. This is our last one. So we set this to frame length. Again, is it equal to what's coming in here? Then if it is, let's pop that out to the false case of that one. And this guy becomes frame length. And at this point, we're done. With a, with a logic chain like this, in this case it doesn't matter, but normally I like to set up a default as well. So what happens if it's none of those things? Not that it will ever be none of those things, but it's just a, a habit I've gotten into. So in this last false case, I'm just going to drop in a frame. So if nothing else happens, if nothing is right, if we've set this up a different way, it will always output frame information. And just like that, we're, we're done with our selector. So this replaces this time node. Let's pop it down here. Here's our master selection coming in from the outside. And we'll go out to where this one goes, which is to frame. And then we can remove this time node. So let's see if it works. At the moment it's set to seconds. And let's change our multiplier so we're just doing one to one. We don't get too confused right now. Let's basically change every second, every 25 frames, and it's interpolated. See, it's got no data before the first one, so it's got nothing to interpolate to. There we go. So that's working. Let's, uh, let's change it to frame. Much better. Text will be a bit insane. And frame length isn't changing. Perfect, it works. Change that back to frames. Now, just to make it the same and provide the functionality that we have on the one I built earlier, we're going to, after this if statement, we're just going to make a couple of uh, conversions. So whatever comes out of here, I want it to be as a long. And just remember that when you convert a fractional number, like a float, like 3.475 to a long, I believe it flaws it. So 3.475 will become three. 3.8 would become 3. Not entirely sure that's true. You could put a round in there if you if you want to to make it work. But to the best of my knowledge, that's how it works. So let's get some naming going. So I'm going to time out again. And then time out long. 
And the last one we're going to make is a scalar field. Like this. And this is really useful for fields and why, and why I put it in here. I'll pop this up here. Okay. We're done. We now have recreated the time warp node and our time warp construct. We have the same, I mean, I can make the menu work the same way, in case you haven't seen how that's done. Type multiplier and then loop move port up. I'm just right clicking and, and using the using the menus. I don't have my fancy logo and stuff on there yet, but that comes later. That's another lesson. We've recreated the time warp node. Behaves in exactly the same way. It does the same thing. It allows us to multiply our time, to loop if we want to, to set the length of our loop. Just don't forget that when you're working with Alembics, you set your interpolation on the read Alembic node. And that's about it. I hope this has helped and have a good day. Thanks.